Execution. How's that? Giovanni de' Medici has granted a plain soldier the privilege of dueling with him. Don't you call that chivalrous? There's no hope of victory in a duel with Giovanni. In any other company, he'd have been drawn and quartered for leaving his post. He's a deserter. With Giovanni, he'll die with a sword ah. in his hand at least. here with your instruments of bad luck. You can scent out death like a vulture. Each to his own profession. Yours is to kill while I do my best to snatch the victim's soul from the eternal flames of hell. <laughs> and if you don't succeed, you do the devil a favor by sending him his prey well oiled and ready for cooking. <laughs> Heavens to protect anyone, it should be the poor fellow he's killing. He's a traitor and deserves to die. Anybody who takes up soldiering as a career knows he's not very likely to die an old man. <laughs> a company of good for nothing, unworthy of a gentleman of my rank. If they hadn't found an outlet in the army for their thirst for violence, <laughs> they would have all ended up at the end of a rope as brigands and assassins. And you too, my fine gentleman, have found a refuge in a company of mercenaries. Outside the army, a doctor who kills his patients isn't very popular. Why, I'm doing them a service. Well. You see, if I cure them, they'd have to go and die in battle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid. I've never played executioner. Take back your sword and fight. Our beloved captain is not in the least danger. He could have already finished him easily if we didn't enjoy playing with him like a cat with a mouse. Dutchman envy him his courage. Perhaps. But they never lose sight of their prudence. It's so much more useful. 
Marco, this is not a plaything. Giovanni, you've given that traitor exactly the punishment he deserved. Now can we divide up his possessions? He may have been a coward, but he redeemed himself with an honorable death. He has a right to military honors. See to it, Caspar. I've already given the orders. Giovanni, don't run these foolish risks again. Promise you won't. <laughs> Danger is the only reason I have for living. But you, though, I want you to keep away from these slaughters. They're not for women. And Leave him alone. An enemy doesn't deserve that much pity. What if I'd been captured by the French? It's you who called him an enemy. He came with proposals of peace. An offer of peace at this time can only be a trick. It was not for you to judge. The offer from my commander was directed to the League, and you are only its military chief. In time of war, it is the soldiers who decide the policy. And you can consider yourself lucky that I didn't throw you to my dogs. It would have been the crowning act of your life. I am defenseless. Oh, don't do that. I'm ready to meet you on equal terms. Untie him, Fry, and give him a sword. If I were killed, I could not complete my mission. If I kill you, I could no longer speak of peace. <laughs> Cowards can always find a way to justify their lack of courage. Let's go, Friar. Leave him to warm himself in the sun. Perhaps it'll make his brain more fertile. Watch out, Lamarca. Catch. It's Up. unnecessary cruelty. <laughs> Sometimes you seem like a bloodthirsty animal. I know you're dying to get a sword in your hand, but don't be downhearted. In the army, there's also room for people like you. Each one contributes to the venture in his own way. Here, go drink a cup of wine. God bless you, Captain. <laughs> you see, there's someone who doesn't agree with you. You're surrounded by a crowd of fanatics and flatterers. No one dares contradict you. I am the only one who tells you the truth, and the truth is that you're ruled by terror. But you haven't a single friend who really loves you. Friar, you don't lead armies to victory with paternosters. And when you make war, you don't have time to be soft-hearted. You're wounded. It must be cared for. Ah. If I have it dressed by that drunkard, I'll risk losing my whole arm. It's only a scratch. Astonished. Are you already counting on earning a little money, saying masses for my recovery? I don't need any protection. In heaven or on earth? A king more unbelieving than even you came humbly to Canossa. But since you say you don't believe in God, why do you continue to give me scudi to say masses for the repose of Caterina Sforza? My mother was a very religious woman. And you don't believe you offend her with your cruelty? Offend her? She was a strong woman, able to dominate a kingdom. And I've grown up exactly as she wished. At the age when most boys think only of games, I was living in the midst of an army. This is the only companion of my boyhood. It's only ten years, but it seems ages since I joined my first company of soldiers of fortune. From that moment, I followed only one law. Kill or you're bound to be killed. What do you say to that, Anna? I say that you're right. It's the law of wild beasts. The friar who's here before you didn't think so. He died with sword in hand, fighting beside Giovanni. If occasion demanded, I could do it too. But why are you meddling in this? A real woman would never approve of savagery toward the weak and the defenseless. Ah, do you hear that? The friar doesn't consider you a real woman. And you? <laughs> Fra Salvatore is my spiritual advisor. Once in a while, I must listen to what he says. <laughs> Another unnecessary cruelty would be to keep this blessed turkey waiting. Aha! You set my mind spinning with a lot of talk so you can take over the roast turkey. Friar, you must work for it. 
Uh, we'll fight with equal weapons. Uh, what about throwing axes? No, no, you've already taken me once. And neither will I accept cards or dice that you will certainly have doctored. Now, look here. This is a game where your cleverness won't be worth much. Courage. And don't cheat. <laughs> Come on, Friar. <laughs> uh, what's happened to your cleverness, eh? Well, this time I have you. Oh! You see? Reason prevails over force. Deceit, not reason. Deceit <laughs> is the offspring of reason. It allows you to sidestep the obstacle that you don't dare to face. <laughs> oh. Up to now, everything has gone well. Huh? Unless force is wedded to reason, I'm afraid you won't succeed. The French send an offer of a peaceful alliance while planning for war. And the German Lutherans are paying court to the Pope. <laughs> Politics. Ha. I'm only waiting for Camillo di Sermonetta to bring me the order and then to war. Camillo is a clever man. He does my thinking. In order to protect our own interests, we must be unprejudiced. Therefore, I raise the question as to whether the greatest danger to the Italian states still lies with France. Sforza is right. France as the first has been weakened by continuous wars, while Charles V is becoming stronger every day. That is true. France is no longer a threat. Now I fear the strength of the German troops. Whoever has seen their pikemen fight says they're a real scourge of God. His Holiness does not conceal his grave concern that the Lutheran heresy is advancing with the German army then the Pope would give his support to another coalition directed against Charles V and with the help of Francis I? I believe His Holiness would not be willing to take the initiative, but would be willing to give his material and spiritual support if others were to make the arrangements. I feel that our discussion has not been unprofitable. I see, though, that Camillo di Sermoneta has not given us his opinion of the matter. I haven't yet made up my mind on what course I should follow. In contrast to a great many of you, I haven't taken up arms first on one and then on the other side in this struggle. Alliances should always correspond to the interests of the people and not to an abstract ideal. Keeping faith with one's given word is not an abstract ideal. But no one worries about keeping his word when his own interests clearly show that he should change sides. <laughs> come, come, gentlemen, let's get to the facts. I don't hesitate to confirm the support of Venice in the proposed alliance against the German. However, I consider it would be a great mistake to continue the fight against Francis I. Doesn't our unanimity encourage you somewhat to join with us? I'll speak no longer of moral reason. But also from the point of view of our own interests, I can recover the lands that the French have stolen from me only by fighting against Francis I. Isn't this a sufficient reason for continuing the war? You'll have to continue it alone, then. Camillo di Sermonetta. <laughs> and in that case, you will also lose those lands which you managed to hold. <laughs> My son, in the name of his holiness, I urge you to try to understand. I do understand, your eminence. Under these circumstances, it would be folly to continue the war against Francis I. Excellent, Camillo. I'm delighted that we now have unity of opinion. No. We're still not all in agreement. But who else is there? Giovanni dalle Bande Nere. He's in your pay. He'll obey whatever orders you give him. Giovanni is exactly like a brother to me. And he too hoped to make war against the French in order to win back the lands of Catalina Sforza, his mother. It is His Holiness's desire that you should find some way to talk to him and convince him. I'll try. But it will not be an easy thing to do. Giovanni de Medici should never receive this visit from Camillo di Sermoneta. I understand. That way, Giovanni will believe that his friend wanted to continue the war with the French to the death. Naturally. And who could be more interested in his death than the membership of the League? 
who want to make peace with Francis I. Good, your plan is excellent. When do you think we should act? We know that Camillo expects to reach the camp of Giovanni di Medici sometime tomorrow. Good. Leave everything to me. You can tell your commander he has no need to worry. The French and Italians will carry on the war. And when their strength is exhausted, you can overcome them with no trouble. When our glorious imperial banners will be unfurled over all Italy, the Kaiser will not forget the good services of his friends. I do not doubt it, but I expect an even greater joy from the successful accomplishment of our immediate aim. <laughs> I wasn't speaking precisely of this. The immediate aim of all my actions is the ruin of Giovanni dalle Bande Nere. I hate that man. His star makes mine pale. He's always claimed for himself the glory of every enterprise. I'll never find peace until I have destroyed his power. We urged you not to do anything foolish. <laughs> you needn't worry. Say good. Let's go. Careful. Camilo di Sermonita was in more of a hurry than we thought. It's better if we are not seen together. You go down that way. Thank you, gentlemen. Your business seems to be good. It'd be a great deal better if it weren't for the war. Here, take this up to the lady who arrived this evening. A lady alone in these troubled times? She's traveling with her maid and a companion. I have no doubt she's a noble woman. She's leaving tomorrow morning for Urbino. Where I'm coming from. Well, I'll be off. Thank you, sir. Uh, how far is it from here to the camp of Giovanni dalle Bandanelli? Only a few miles, that's all. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Giovanni sent me here to escort you to the camp. Welcome. It's pleasant to see the face of a friend. But Giovanni's thoughtfulness seems a bit excessive. He shouldn't have spoilt your evening. He was concerned for your safety. <laughs> I wonder when Giovanni will stop seeing conspiracies everywhere. Have a lance in your hand. Hold it tight. Charge now. Now it's your turn. Aim at my chest. Don't be afraid. Come on. Here, take it and learn to hold on to it. Captain. I found this horse grazing in the field along with our mounts. I've never seen him before, sir. Where could he have come from? It has the insignia of Sermoneta. Something's happened to Camilo, one of his men. Caspar, we must search the countryside. If there's been a crime, we'll soon know it. Oh, yes, but it might prove difficult to find a murderer. We'll find him, too. Give me a horse!
up. I'm asking you for the last time. Speak or I'll kill you and your whole family. Who are those three strangers? I swear by the lives of my children. I don't know anything. I, n I never asked the names of my clients. Lumaka! Captain, there's a magnificent coach outside. May I take it along? Take whatever you want. Sure, there'll be nothing left here but ruins. No, my lord, I beg ah. you, no. Ah, Captain, instead of vultures, we found two pretty young chickens. You want to pluck them? You take care of them. Gluttony, you know what your men are like. Why do you want to involve women and innocent people in your anger? By the name you bear, you must stop it. <laughs> Don't you dare touch me. Come along, my come pretty me. one. Come to my house. We'll Don't make you happy. Oh, no. no. Let me be. Let me go. Oh. Oh. Let me be. Stop it. Let If you are their captain, order them to kill me at once. At least have that much pity. Let her go and get out at once. Out! I told you to get out! I'm sorry. Is there something I can do to make up for what has happened? I knew the soldiers of Giovanni de Medici were beasts. But I didn't know they could also be vile cowards. They went beyond their orders, and they will be punished for it. By whom? That bandit captain of yours? Instead, I believe that it is you who will be punished for your kindness. I think I can face the consequences of my action. I hope Giovanni de' Medici will not be too harsh with me. Yes, I hope so. And I thank you. This adventure has made it possible for me to know that among that horde of bandits who follow your captain, there is at least one gentleman. Captain! Captain! Down there, in the ditch, he's dead. Who? Camilo di Sermonetta. already dead. If he was still alive, I'll wager you'd even surrender to him. Surely. And stop pulling such a long face. I invited you here to enjoy yourselves, to be merry. Here, let's drink to the health of the King of France and to the coming peace. <laughs> Giovanni, what does this mean? What do you want? Miserable cowards. You've murdered the one friend I had in the world. You, Nicola de Rovo, I've always despised you, but I was wrong. I should have killed you like a dog. Now then, Giovanni, you're quite mistaken about this. You were mistaken when you killed Camillo. It's an absurd accusation. Let us defend ourselves. Defend yourselves? Could he defend himself? You struck him in the back. Oh, no. No, Gentile de Verano, Corrado Malespini, they can all testify that I had absolutely no reason whatever to bear Camillo de Sermonetta ill will. It isn't my fault if I love peace. More than war, and besides, yesterday, Camilo, too, was able to see the absurdity of carrying on a war so completely beyond our resources. You can prove it, your friends here. What Nicola del Rovo says is true. I can understand your grief. But if you don't wish to hear our side, we will not stand for any more of your insults. If blood alone is able to convince you, you can cross your sword with no, mine. No, don't be hasty. First, you must listen to us. 
Camilo de Sermonet accepted the responsibility of going to you to try to persuade you to end the war. And it was after he'd made this decision that he was killed. Whoever killed him was not with us, but against us. Whoever killed him expects to benefit by our lack of harmony. Our lack of harmony can only help the French. If you didn't kill him, they must have done it. You're forgetting that Camilo de Sermonetta was a messenger of peace. Are you accusing Charles V of Camillo's murder? I'm making suppositions. It's my opinion that today Charles V is an adversary much more to be feared than Francis I. What do you mean? Do you want to persuade me to join the French? Camillo de Sermonetta fought as I am doing, to liberate his lands occupied by the French. I shall continue to fight them. Gather the members of the League. Let's see if they want to follow me or accept your arguments. My arguments are capable of bringing about the same results. All the better. Camilo died without ever seeing his home again. I swear that his body shall be buried in his own land. And I shall continue to make war against whoever tries to stop me, no matter if they be French or German. Or Italian. Cowards belong to no country. Is it really necessary to wait any longer? I think it's time we were given a little rest. Please be patient. It's such a long time since they've seen each other. Try to understand. Look, Captain, the carriage from the inn is caught up with us here. We're going to find ourselves billets for the night. Giovanni, you know where to begin looking for us. There can't be too many taverns in this miserable place. Come on, men, let's go. Aren't you thirsty? Come on, have a drink with me. I'll pay. Where is your mistress? She's down in the crypt. You deserve a kiss. I'm so happy to see you again. You're really wonderful. I'm certain you're a genius. Keep your congratulations until I've finished the frescoes in the crypt. Captain. Captain. I didn't expect to see you again so quickly. Nor did I, I'm sure. And I'm sorry. I'm afraid my presence is once again a disturbance. Oh, no, no. My brother would be happy to know you. Your brother? Yes. I told him about our meeting and also about all the kindness you showed me. Tommaso, this is the gentleman I told you of. Forgive me, I don't even know your name. One can easily see that you belong to the troops of Giovanni de' Medici. But he's very different from his commander. What I mean is that with me, he'd behaved... Do you think Giovanni de' Medici would have behaved any differently to you? Certainly. A man without a heart, without any religion. What respect could he have for a woman? Perhaps he's unaware that women like you exist. The proof that exists of his cruelty makes any justification useless. It is because of men like him that we are still at war today. Why do you talk about things you don't understand? I think you're better at handling a paintbrush than a sword. That may well be, but I can handle a sword well enough not to be called a coward. Tommaso, what are you saying? The captain had no intention of insulting you. Forgive him, I beg you. Tommaso talks this way because the war keeps us from our mother. The French have occupied our lands and taken our home at Caravaggio. I'm sorry. So am I. After all, you were probably right. I would have cut a very poor figure using a sword against you. <laughs> if there are any gentlemen among the troops of Giovanni de' Medici, I think we ought to treat them well. They're such a rarity these days. If you're staying in Urbino, come and have dinner with us. It's not like home, but I've discovered a cook that... Is tomorrow all right? If you will accept the invitation, it would make me very happy. Of course I accept. Even if they told me the camp was in flames, I wouldn't miss such an opportunity. It's years since I've eaten at a properly set table. <laughs> but it's not only that. It's that... I'd be glad to see you again. Adieu. Do you know what people call that kind of behavior? No. It's love. He's madly in love with you. Oh, don't be silly. No? And to think I was ready to believe that Emma had realized it. And that she didn't mind it a bit. Oh. 
Why, what are you saying? I don't even know his name. Is it really necessary? Absolutely, Grandpa. Anyone who joins a company can have neither beard or straggling hair like yours. We shave like the ancient Romans. Uh-huh. Hey, come here, you. Now get back in line there. Must be a really exceptional woman to have caught Giovanni. Did you see her? A Madonna, two eyes that are beyond description. I believe it. Giovanni's never been in love before, but this time, I believe he has really fallen. <laughs> well, sooner or later, it even had to happen to him. Cheer up, your tortures are about to come to an end. <laughs> Ubaldo, take a crossbow and send this rascal to the devil. Caspar! What are you doing? I've given the order to kill him. Instead, you can set him free. He'll die in battle with his companions. I told you to set him free. Do as I say. Come, Caspar. We must prepare to move against the French. Father, what's happened to Giovanni? If the results are good, why do you look for the cause, hmm? Where is the captain? There, inside his tent. Look after this horse. If it weren't for this accursed river... Today, Giovanni. What are you doing here? Do you still think you can stop me? No. We've decided to support your action. We can't give you any concrete help, I but... know exactly what you have in mind. I risk my men and you want to share in the spoils of a possible victory, right? Giovanni, when will you stop being so suspicious? When the world has been purged of politicians. In any event, I accept your help, as you call it. I want to speak to Giovanni. Let me pass. Wait here. Let go of me. I must see Giovanni. Let me pass. No, no. I must see him. Let me go. Let her go. Oh, for pity's sake, Giovanni. Give me back my son. He's too young to go to war with you. Kill me if you want to. But you must spare my son's life. Who is your son? He's only a boy. He ran away from home to enlist. He said he wanted to go off to war with you. He's all I have. Giovanni, oh, won't you help me? If you need soldiers, he'll fight for you when he's a grown man. Not now, Giovanni. Please leave me, my son. I beg you. Send someone to find him. At once, Captain. You'll find him among the new recruits. Mother. Lorenzo! Lorenzo, my only son, my baby. Mother. Lorenzo, what a fright. What a terrible thing you did to your poor mother. May I take him home? We can go now, can't we? Take him away. Yes, yes, we're going at once. And God will remember this kind act of yours, Giovanni. You won't regret it.
Here, I've cooked a dinner worthy of a king's table. I hope you like it. Do you think these are enough flowers? There's Tommaso. Here. Nonsense. Master Tommaso was always late. Heavens. Perhaps it's he, and I'm not ready yet. Put away the basket. No, open the door. Oh, I... I didn't expect you so early. I know. But I can't accept your invitation. I've come to say goodbye. But why? I must go with my troops. An order? Yes, an order. And for the first time in my life, I would willingly disobey an order of this kind. However, to make war seems my destiny. What do you mean? Is there going to be war again? Yes. It's strange how the word war assumes the most terrible significance on your lips. I'm afraid of war. My mother is living in French territory. Where are you going? I don't know. I can't say where we'll give battle. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Save her. Don't do that, please. Crying will do no good. I know it won't. For you soldiers, crying and heartbreak are unimportant. That wasn't what I meant. Forgive me, I know. You've already shown me how kind-hearted you are. I'm like the others, perhaps worse than the others. You don't know how many tears I've seen fall without my heart feeling the slightest touch of pity. War, grief, destruction, this has always been my life. Without a moment of peace, without affection. Day by day, my heart has dried up. How very sad your life must be. Not now. You could never imagine how much warmth has come to me simply from knowing you. Tell me that I may see you again. That doesn't depend on us. I only need know that you wished, and I will find a way to come back to you. I'll pass by here with my troops. Will you let me stay near you then for a few moments? It isn't much that you ask of me. It is for me. Thank you. I'll be waiting for you. the column. Isn't it better to push on by forced march? There's a hard battle ahead. I don't want the soldiers to get to it tired. Sound a halt! But we lose the advantage of a surprise. The French don't expect us now. I never go back on my decisions. Hurry there!
with my sword. I'll be back in an hour, perhaps before. you're curious to know where he's going. Why, do you know? Yes, and I could also show you a very interesting sight. What do you mean? Giovanni has finally found the woman of his dream. It's not true, you're lying. Really? Giovanni de' Medici should find out that you left the company to come here, he would punish you. Let's not speak of him. Giovanni de' Medici doesn't exist. Or at least I'd like to think that he doesn't exist. This is the first opportunity I've had to be really near you. Perhaps the last. Let me forget everything that separates us. You seem to be searching for the bitterest words to torment yourself. I have always thought that only the impossible was denied to man. But now I know I was mistaken. I know that I shall never find the thing which could make me truly happy. There's a desire in me for the unobtainable, like a craving for unlimited power. At times, man loses sight of his capabilities to the point of considering himself a god. And it is this feeling which makes me hate every comfort, all resignation, that compels me to fight against everyone and everything. But from the first moment I met you, suddenly my entire past, my character, my feelings, all of me, appeared hateful, unworthy. You shouldn't say such things. You mustn't despise life. I despise it only now that I begin to realize that I've thrown it away. Oh, Em, I would like so much to be able to go back, to begin to live and to really exist. But I fear it's too late. But what are you saying? Your great sensitivity and your generosity make you a worthy man. If I were to be the cause of so much unhappiness, I should never forgive myself. I'd give my whole life for one hour like this. But I have a presentiment that I shall never feel so near to you again. Almost as if tomorrow's battle is to be my last one. No, I shall pray that we may see each other again. One request. Will you spare it? At least Caravaggio. You see, my mother lives there. My brother has gone to join her. I shall protect them at the risk of my own life. Goodbye, Emma. No matter what happens, no matter what you may hear about me, remember that you are the only woman I have ever loved. I will not forget. Because in a few days you'll be here to remind me. Satisfied? are in a powerful position. Their camp is protected by the river. There is only one bridge and the water is deep and treacherous. They've placed about 30 cannon on the river bank to protect their rear line. Even they have learned a few things from us. Yes, but Giovanni's not there, Commander. We could outflank the enemy by passing through Caravaggio. No. Caravaggio must be spared. But it's the only way we can fall upon the French from behind. I'm in command here. 
We'll cross the river at this point. I want about 50 volunteers, armed only with swords and poniards. And a little luck. They've been gabbing for four hours, and we're still here. I've had enough. Ah, don't complain. As long as you're serving with headquarters, you're as safe and sound as if you're in your own house. In there. They all know where to stay during the war. The French are in the safest possible position. I don't see where he can attack them. This will be the final wild caprice of that madman. Believe me, my friends, war is a far too serious thing for the foolhardiness of Giovanni della Bandinere. I have given orders to all our officers not to prejudice the issue. If Giovanni should lose the battle, we will be in a position to disclaim any part of the responsibility. Anyway, it's impossible to cross the river. Giovanni is a genius, but this time he's risking death. First the river, and then the cannons. If we are able to get our hands on the French cannons, we'll rain down an avalanche of iron and fire on their camp. In the confusion, we'll make a surprise attack. You wait with the cavalry till you hear the first shots. It'll be the signal that we've done it. Then cross the river and hurry to reinforce us. And if you don't succeed? You take command. Giovanni the manager will be dead on the battlefield. Let's go. Now we'll see who is worthy to fight beside me. Gentlemen, I bring you the good news of the victory of Giovanni dalle Bandinere. Then we have won. The victory is ours. Yes, Giovanni was magnificent. He has surprised and routed the French. Did you hear that? Oh, ye men of little faith. But if Giovanni has won the war, we should prevent him from negotiating the peace. You're right.
bowing before your superb performance as a commander, the Comte de Lautrec begs you to accept his invitation to arrange for the surrender in the name of Francis I. Tell your commander I shall be happy to discuss the surrender with him on equal terms. You were magnificent, Giovanni. Permit me to express to you my grateful admiration, and that of the entire League. Contrary to your every expectation, I have placed you in a position to impose your wishes upon Francis I. You may rest assured that in our dealings with the French, we will in no way compromise the spoils which you have so valorously won upon the field of battle. I will take care of those spoils alone. The lands of my mother and of Camillo di Sermonetta have finally come back into my hands. I shall return to camp. You may deal with the French ambassador. Caspar, I leave you in command. Restrain the soldiers. They are already drunk with the thought of sacking. Keep them away from Caravaggio. What? That's an order. Giovanni has sacrificed his men to save two civilians in Caravaggio, the mother and the brother of the fair maiden. Do you feel bound to obey the orders of Giovanni? Mm, I always obey his orders as long as it's to my advantage. And if you found it to be to your advantage to disobey them this time? I don't see how it would be. Have you given me up, then? I have never given you up. No, later. The soldiers may go where they like. I won't have Giovanni. But that woman won't have him either. Wait, 
teach him a lesson. Come on. Uh, come on, let's see how brave you are. Oh. Curse you, take this. Here, you dog, here's a pet for you. <laughs> <laughs> Finish him off. You finish him. Yeah, send him to the uh, devil. <laughs> Tommaso! Tommaso! Oh! Oh, murderers! What have you done to him? What have you done to my child? Uh, be quiet, Tommaso! Get out of the way! Oh, Tommaso! Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Don't you touch him. Don't you touch him. Enough of oh. you. It was the soldiers of Giovanni dalle Bandinere. They spilled blood all through the town, ferocious as wild beasts. You didn't fight in vain. You've avenged Camillo. Now we can come to terms with Francis I. Then will you accept peace with the French? For the good of my country, I'm willing to fight against the Germans, too. Only... Only I hope this is really the last war. Amen. Suffer in torment forever. Listen to me, I implore you. <gasps> Don't go. Emma! Leave me alone. I don't need anyone. Go away. Where is Caspar? Caspar! Caspar! I gave you an order. What happened at Caravaggio? Speak up, man. Explain yourself. Why didn't you stop the soldiers? Speak or I'll kill you like a dog. Casper is innocent. I saw him myself trying to stop the soldiers. Kill me if you wish, but I swear to you it was impossible to restrain those beasts. It was the first time you had forbidden sack. I am not the chief of a band of assassins. They must be treated like common criminals. Form the companies. Order a decimation. With no exceptions. Go! Giovanni. Go away. I don't need you.
You defended me. Thanks. Oh, let me alone. Oh, no, we've had enough talk. I've lost my patience, do you understand? If you'll only wait. More waiting. I've had enough waiting. You're mine now, understand? I want you. You're mine. I'll never love you. Because I love Giovanni. Oh, I don't care about Giovanni. How oh, you tend to love. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. to me you can leave now before I stop it would be an unforgivable sin to waste wine of such good quality Murder a butcher, don't you? Come on, answer, say it. Enough, enough. How could she possibly believe such a thing? It's as if I'd killed my own mother, do you hear? The same grief. Calm yourself, my son. These meetings have become dangerous since we've made an alliance with France. We already know the course to take. Our commander, Franz Beck, is marching down Italy with 12,000 pikemen. We only need to know how many Italian and French troops are waiting and where they intend to give battle. I see. That will allow you to take them by surprise. A piece of information like that is worth much more than all the ferocity of your pikemen.
Who is it? I'm sorry, I have some news for you that may please you. Only the devil could bring me news that would please me. I have found out where Emma Caldara is. Where? In a convent near Montefeltro. She asked hospitality of the sisters. She wants to take the vow. No! She can't do that. She can't give up a whole life because of me. It's not because of you, Giovanni. It's because of a misunderstanding that you've never cleared up. But she doesn't believe me. She's convinced that I'm the murderer of her mother. I know she'll never Try listen it. to me. Try it, my son. Now that her grief is less intense, go to the convent and talk to her. Courage, Giovanni. Go to her. Giovanni, the Count of Lautrec wishes to speak to you. I have no time now. Give the orders to my adjutant. I'm ready to fight. But it is important. I have waited until today for your decisions. Now you wait for me. Your commander's rude behavior is highly offensive both to France and to Francis I, whom I represent. We are all accustomed to the brusque manner of our commander, Giovanni de' Medici. But he is able to excuse himself with his bravery. I hope so. Just as I hope that our alliance will serve to destroy... Count de Lautrec, uh, our only objective is to stop Franz Berger and his army of pikemen who are devastating Italy. We need to attack quickly and with all our forces. Frunsberg has reached Pavia. You Italians dramatize everything. But before attacking, let us try to increase our strength. Well, then, how are we to proceed? The Germans must be stopped at all costs while we prepare ourselves for the final battle. A man like Giovanni de la Bandanera would be ideal for engaging the pikemen. It will be a massacre. But Giovanni will never say no. Giovanni de' Medici wishes to see you. No, no, I don't want to see him, sister. Send him away. I'm sorry, but she doesn't wish to see you. But I must speak to her. She can't condemn me without letting me explain. I don't want her to hate me. Wait a moment. Oh, please, you mustn't go in. It's forbidden. It's a sacrilege. Sisters. Emma, listen to me. Listen to me, please. Don't come near me. I don't want to. I cannot listen to you. But I shall pray heaven to forgive you your crimes. What are they? I don't want to be forgiven. I'm ready to pay for whatever crimes I've committed. But I don't want to be accused of crimes of which I am not guilty. Emma. That's blasphemy, Giovanni. You're blaspheming. Go away. You've destroyed my whole life. Go away. Respect my grief at least. Go. And forget me. Don't ever come back. I won't go. I won't go until you have heard me. Emma, I implore you. And you accuse me of being cruel. Giovanni de' Medici will set up resistance at Borgoforte, but he'll be in command of only a single company. Nicola del Rovo, Gentile da Varano, Francesco Sforza, and the other allies hope to have the time to prepare for a decisive battle. You will annihilate Giovanni de' Medici. Jawohl, we should attack soon. No, not soon. At once.
These Italians will remember the name of Georg Frunsberg for quite a long while. Ha! Aber, I shall have my greatest glory in Rome, where I intend to hang the Pope with this golden cord. <laughs> to fight heroically, valorously, yes, but to seek death almost deliberately. You know him as well as I do. You're wasting your breath. But it's madness. It will be a massacre. I know what's worrying him. Giovanni has always known what he was doing. This time he knows he is wrong, but uh -huh. he persists. It's Emma's fault. She is the one who has upset him. I shall go to her, and if she will listen to me, we can avoid this disaster. Ah! Hurry, quickly, get me yes. a horse, quickly! Giovanni and his heroes will never come back from Borgoforte. And their sacrifice will be useless. Theirs? Yes. Because we will get away. I have a pass to get through the German lines. The pass is for me, and for you, of course. Let me be. How will you get to the German lines? I'll persuade Giovanni to let me have command of the men who are to hold the defile at Borgoforte. The German lines are a hundred yards away. And the men, won't they refuse? The men will take their orders from whoever is in command. And I will be in command. And the orders will never be given. You coward! Dirty traitor! You scoundrel! You do such a thing! What's wrong with you? And you really thought that I would agree? That I would become your accomplice? You have betrayed him as much as I have. I have never put his life in danger. And what is more, I'm going to warn him. Take care, Casper. Stay away. You have always shared both good and bad fortune with me, but this time all I can offer you is glory and death. I will not force you to stay, but I am certain that every one of you will want to end his career as a soldier of fortune on this field of utterly hopeless battle. Your silence speaks more clearly than any amount of words. I thank you. Now one of my officers must take command of a group of men to block the defile at Borgoforte at its narrowest point. Giovanni, my loyalty and my devotion give me the right to take command of this mission. Allow me to hold the defile. Thank you, Caspar. Now then, the wounded will be taken inside the shelter. There, behind the kitchen. And out here, the feed for the horse. Stefano! Huh? Stefano! Hurry, Stefano! Quick, hurry! Your daughter is dying. What? Hurry! Where is she? <laughs> Ah! 
Anna. Oh, my child. Who was it? Father. Take me to Giovanni. Caspar's betrayed him. We must hurry. But tell me, who was it? Caspar. Caspar, it was Caspar. We must save Giovanni. Help me with her. Giovanni offered you death. Instead, I offer you a new life. If you will follow me, you will have a new chief, better pay, and you will no longer live under the ferocious discipline of Giovanni de' Medici. Come on, speak up. I would like to know your decision. I am with you, Caspar. Just a moment, my friends. Listen to me. Our profession is to sell ourselves to the one who pays best. We've endured hardships and suffering with the Bandanera, it's true. But to betray Giovanni, I don't like it. Now listen. Is there anyone else not in agreement? Hooray! For your horses! We'll abandon the defile to its fate. Give the signal to the Germans. There's nothing to stop them now. Yes, sir. Give me that. Giovanni, I'm happy that I could give my life for you. Save yourself. Save yourself if there's time. Yes. Anna. The traitor. To your horses! We must block the defile! Forgive me, my beloved child.
military command. My leg, curse it. Does it hurt, Captain? I've got to get up. Is there much pain? I don't want to die this way. I don't want to die this way either, Giovanni. Please, now that we're near the end, let me ride on your charger. It must be wonderful to throw yourself into the fight from the height of the saddle. Poor Lamarca. The why my horse is yours. Take it. Thank you. I'll make you proud, Captain. We'll never find Giovanni's body here. And yet it must be here. He wasn't the kind who let himself be taken prisoner.
you're possessed of the devil. Foul traitor scoundrel! I came here to look at your corpse. I wanted to make sure that you had been finished once and for all. I'll kill you with my own hands. with traitors myself. The weapon that you chose. Don't try to talk, my dear. You must rest now. I've lost. Yes, I, I've lost my battle. But now I see that perhaps there are more important things than winning or losing a battle. Where was I trying to go, Emma? What was it that drove me on? What was it? The wild blood of my mother, racing in my veins, violent, savage. Perhaps it is this which has always goaded me to live as I have lived up to now. No, Giovanni. You live, you get well, and you forget. We will never leave each other. I love you. I've always loved you. We'll be happy together, always. Save him, dear Lord. My friend, Giovanni. <laughs> 